to get a song book, turn to number 62.
How many has assurance, without a doubt, in their heart, this morning, as you sit here, that if God said, you're out, you would be in heaven? Stand to your feet, get you a songbook, turn to 235, sing it like you've never sung it before. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Father is sitting on his throne this morning and going, Amen. Sweet smelling Savior right there. Who's come with a special song on your heart this morning? You want to sing?
Check one.
we're going to do one this morning we've never done before, so pray for us here as we get ready to do it, and I know we're coming out of Easter, but I just, there's never a time that I don't want to praise my Lord for everything that he's done for us. There's never a time that I don't want to praise him for it, and this song's been on my heart all week, and, and we're going to try it here. On a hill called Calvary, Jesus, my Lord, suffered for me, carried the cross all the way, my sins to atone. Then they nailed him to the cross, great was the pain and the loss, he suffered it all. Oh. 
by the smallest mustard seed. Well, then our mountains will be mastered by the master of our needs. But if we have that childlike trust, he said, he would do the greatest thing. Like
see everybody that's come to be with us today. Good to be in the house of the Lord, ain't it? Amen. Thank God for his blessings. Watching over us and keeping us another week. God's good to us, amen. amen. Tell you what, things are blooming and looking pretty right now in eastern Kentucky, ain't they? Amen. Apple trees over there is about as pretty as I believe I remember seeing them. I hope there's that many apples this year. That'd be all right for me. And uh, we thank God that you've come to be with us today if you're here visiting with us. We want you to feel free to worship God with us today. Good to see some that we ain't seen in a while. It's a blessing to be in the house of God with you today. Ephesians chapter 2, if you got your Bible. Ephesians chapter 2. Yeah, it's a blessing to be in God's house today. Pray for several in our church. This morning, some of them walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Just remember, Philip, Manita, and their family, Philip's brother-in-law, went home Thursday night to be with Jesus. 48-year-old young man, battled cancer for a while, got a young family, and children need lifted up to the Lord. Amen? That family does. Remember them today. 
Several of you here today have family that's sick that you're dealing with. And many here today have other things that you're dealing with. But you know what? God is faithful. And He's just. And he said He'd supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. And I believe God is still a need supplying God. And I believe if you'll call on Him today out of your heart, He'll hear you. And I believe that He'll help you. And may knows there's help in the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's help in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, if you'd like to stand with us, you can do that today. We'll read God's Word together. Ephesians chapter 2, we'll start reading about the 11th verse. Ephesians 2 and 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Thank God for the blood of Christ. Amen. Brother Jim Pruitt, will you take us to the Lord today? Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, help us, Jesus. Love you today, God. Yes, God. Grant it for. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like. Thank you so much for standing with us today. Always be springtime in glory. I may know that song. Well, let's learn it then. It's a good name. Just ain't got the allergies to go with it. Prettiest flowers you ever see to bloom in heaven. I believe that. I don't think we'll ever have anything as beautiful down here as what we're going to have waiting on us over there. It'll be a beautiful place. Notice what the scripture said in Paul. Talking to the church at Ephesus. They were kind of hung up on something. Something that still today people kind of get hung up on. They get hung up on, am I good enough to get to heaven? They get hung up on, have I worked enough to get to heaven? They get hung up on deeds and things like that. Titus put it this way, friend, and I'm going to quote what he said. He said it like this. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Amen. If you get to heaven, it'll be through grace. Amen. Nothing else. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Paul and a lot of these early churches in these letters, you'll see the same theme. There was a lot of them struggled because they was coming out of traditions. And they was coming out of things that they did, that they felt like if they did not do them, they were not pleasing unto God. And Paul had talked to some people, and evidently there's some people in the church at Ephesus that was hung up on circumcision and wondering about it and felt like maybe because there were some that was Gentiles there that they wasn't born naturally of the nation of Israel, that there was no way that they could get to heaven. I want to preach today on the thought of are you with or without hope? Are you with or without hope? And I'll touch on what that means in just a minute in the way that God gave it to me yesterday morning sitting at my table. But I began to think about how that these Gentiles was much like us. Uh, a lot of them maybe felt like that they never could be good enough for God to love. You know that's 90% of the reason why people won't come to the house of God that 
wasn't raised in church or, or maybe was never around Christianity or maybe never heard the preaching of the cross. You know, that's why a lot of them won't come because they feel like that I, I could never be good enough to be pleasing unto God. Well, friend, if you could get good enough, we wouldn't have to preach a gospel. Amen. But you can't get good enough. Amen. There's not anybody that's sitting in this church is good enough to get to heaven. Amen. There's not anybody sitting in any church throughout this world it is good enough to get to heaven. The Bible says you must be saved. Amen. And Jesus came so that you could be saved. Amen. That's what he told Nicodemus. Nicodemus had the same hang-up. You go and read about it in John's Gospel, chapter 3. Nicodemus was stuck on the same thing. He, he said, we know you're a teacher. Nobody could do these things if they were not of God and were not come from God. You remember what Jesus told Nicodemus? He said, except you be born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. He gave him the answer. In other words, there's nothing you'll ever do, Nicodemus, in yourself to get yourself there. You've got to have salvation. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something today. Christian people, we are the only people in this world that's filled with hope. Amen. Amen. Do you realize that? There's no other religion preaches hope like Christianity does. Because our hope does not lie in this world. But our hope lies beyond this world. The Bible even says if you've got hope in this life only, then you're of all men most miserable. I've met those people before. Those people that said, well, we'll just die and go back to the earth and that'll be the end of us. No, friend, you've got a soul inside of you and Jesus died to save that soul. Somebody say amen right there. Somebody, Jesus died to save that soul and to cover that soul and to cleanse that soul and to make that soul ready uh, to go to heaven. Now the sin of uh, the flesh is created in sin. It'll sin until it dies. But the soul that's covered by the blood of Jesus is made perfect and is ready and is clothed in righteousness. Amen. Something that you can't do by yourself. Something that only God Almighty can do Himself. Amen. But I begin to think about this. <coughs> I begin to think about what we're reading today and how that how that Paul said now days of the circumcision. Uh, are, are of the Gentiles, let's read it, verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in past time Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. And he said in the 12th verse that if ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, are you with or without hope? and without God in the world. I began to think about that when I read it, and I thought about how that there were so many of them at that church said they, not, they have been through the tradition of circumcision like us. Then they're without hope. If they are not circumcised, they'll not get there. That's the way a lot of them believe. That sort of sounds like uh, some of these people out there today, and I wouldn't offend anybody on purpose for nothing, but there's a, a lot of people feels like if you don't go to their denomination or their church or walk their way, that you ain't got no way to make it into heaven. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible said, Jesus said, I am the way, amen. The truth and the life. Uh, listen, you can't go no other way. There ain't no other door. There ain't no other gate. There's no other hope for you but through the blood of Christ. Amen. That's the only way to get there. I, but I begin to think about how a lot of them, they probably felt like, I'll never be great. I'll never be loved in the eyes of God. So they was without hope in the world. Let's look at what hope is. I looked up a definition of it yesterday, and I thought, well, this is a good definition. I've got a real old dictionary uh, that I go back to sometimes that I was put together back in the early 70s, and, and it uh, said that hope is a feeling that what one desires will happen. A feeling that what one desires will happen. What's the Bible say about hope? The Bible said it in, in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is uh, knowing that what you're desiring is coming to pass. You can't have faith without hope and you can't have hope without faith. Amen. They work together. They don't work against each other. They work together. And I thought about how the word hope, I looked this up yesterday and I've done a little research 
research on it, the word hope is mentioned in the King James Version of the Bible 131 times. And, uh, you go all through Psalms and David talked about the hope uh, that was of the Lord, that was in the Lord, uh, and the hope that God had for His people. And I thought about that and I thought without hope, uh, without a feeling of uh, what one desires will happen, uh, without that, what have you got? Uh, you've got insecurity. Uh, you've got fear. You've got anxiety. You've got depression. You've got the grief. You've got uncertainty and you've got loss. See, when hope is removed from a person, automatically these feelings is what replaces it. But I've come to tell you today, if you're suffering from depression, if you're suffering from anxiety, if you've been through loss, if you're experiencing grief, if you've got heartache, if you've got trouble, I come to preach hope to you because the God that I serve and the the Jesus that is even of the Spirit of God. The Jesus that we serve is seated at the right hand of God. And His Spirit is walking through this church. Back and forth through these pews. And He's touching men's hearts. And He's telling them, why don't you come to me and I'll show you what hope's all about. I could stand here and I'd preach all day about the goodness of God. But you'll never know how good it is until you turn loose of fear, until you turn loose of anxiety, until you turn loose of loss, until you turn loose of depression, and you reach out and you get a hold of God Almighty. Because help me right here just a second, church, when God comes in, all them things go out, and they might try to rear their head. You may have a day where you're weak, and those feelings come back, but you can go back to the spot that Jesus came in your heart. You can remind him of the day and the hour how that he saved your soul and they've got to go. How the devil can't stand in the presence of Almighty God. Because when Almighty God walks into your life how there's things that cannot be in his presence. There's things that can't stand in the awesomeness of Almighty God. And he's here this morning and he's reaching out and and He will help you. You don't have to live without hope. Amen. You don't have to do it. When you take the hope out of someone. You take the life out of them. You realize that? Oh glory. There's a lady that's in the presence of God right now. That a few years ago. The doctors come in. And told her. Said listen. You read up with cancer. And there ain't nothing we can do. And she raised her hands and began to worship God. And that doctor said, I don't believe you understood what I said. There's no kind of treatment we can give you to help me or to help you. And she said, I don't believe you understand what I said. I'm getting to go to be where Jesus is. There's no cancer over there. There's no sickness over there. There's no hurt or heartache over there. Has the church lost its hope today? Has the church lost its vision of the hope that we have in God Almighty? Just as sure as that sun peeped through the clouds right yonder. Of the same God that we serve. Our Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Is going to step out over yonder. And He's going to call a bride that He loves. That he cleaned, that he made ready to go. We are not walking in this world without hope. If your hope is lost, you need to get in touch with God. Because what are we made proud now of? We're made now by the blood of Christ. You know what makes my spirit intercess with the spirit of my brothers? It's the blood of Christ. You know what makes my spirit intercess with all you today? It's the blood of Christ. When we were separated, and was a sanctioned way. God Almighty let His own Son come to the cross and give His own blood so you and I could be made now by the blood of Christ. Who here has got a little hope today? Woo! You know one of the worst mistakes we'll ever make? Now I'm guilty. I'm going to preach on myself here. Take my shoe off, hit myself in the head. Amen. I think we'll take our shoes off here. Don't do it if you've got steel toes. You might need stitches. You know one of the worst mistakes we'll make? We'll go in to see somebody sick. Maybe the doctors have come in and said we've done all we can do. We'll go in we'll gather around them and we'll pray. We'll ask God to help them to, 
to give them a rest or even to heal them, then we'll go out the door and say, boy, they ain't going to make it, are they? Where's our hope at? Listen, if they're saved, they're going to make it a lot better than this world's going to make it. This world ain't going to make it through judgment. Somebody say amen right there. The judgment of Almighty God is coming upon this world. When the church is raptured out, when all things have been done and fulfilled in the book of Revelations, there's judgment coming down on this world. There's fire and brimstone going to rain down. And it's going to burn it all up. All the works, all the sin, all the evil, all the things that turned God's stomach, He's going to burn them up. Amen. And it's going to happen. But you know what? I ain't going to be here. Well, I've got hope in my Jesus. Amen. Anybody got hope in Jesus here today? Oh, let's look at this. Now turn your Bible over to the book of Acts. I'm going to show you what I believe is one of the most perfect examples of someone who had lost hope. Someone that needed refreshed of what hope is. And God showed them. Acts chapter 8. Now, now remember, we're, but, but we was love them like he's talking about in Ephesians. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope without God in the world. I want you to think about something as you're, cha- as you're turning your Bible to Acts chapter 8. How would you like to be somewhere besides the presence of God today? How would you like to be walking up the street of a big city and not have anybody to call a friend? Not having any acquaintance to show you any kind of affection? Not having a wife or a husband or children or anything like that. And you're walking out here lost as a ball in high weeds and you don't know left from right or up from down. You know what? Anybody that's in sin's in the same shape without Jesus. We was without hope. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were for off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I believe one of the best examples of this is found over in Acts chapter 8. Let's look at it together, if you will. Verse 26. Look at what happened. The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Philip was one of the, the, the first men that was set aside. Philip was somebody that was operating and under the Spirit of God. Philip had hope all in him, outside of him, all over him. Amen. Don't you like to get around a happy Christian? How many likes to get around a happy Christian? Somebody don't matter what's happening in the world, don't matter what kind of uh, shape that they've been in physically or financially or mentally, but you get around them, they start talking about Jesus, and they're just a happy Christian, amen, because they've got hope. Hope is a great big piece of the puzzle of being happy in life. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Hope and happiness start with the same letter, church. And if we don't start placing our hope in things besides this world, then we're not going to have the happiness that God wants us to have while we're walking down here on this earth. Do you hear me today? Happiness is found in Christ Jesus. I even described it like this. It's joy unspeakable. And it's full of glory. Amen. It's them feelings that you get when you sit down and you begin to read where God intercessed for somebody in the Word of God and you've been praying and you've been hoping and you've been looking and you've been holding fast to the promises of God and even in the worst day that you're having and you're thinking I don't know if God's going to answer this prayer for me I don't know if this loved one's going to get better I don't know if this child's going to come home I don't know if my daddy's going to get saved or my mommy I don't know if my child's ever going to come to Jesus you look at them promises it's written in the word of God but God will give you hope from the start of the day to the going down of the sun and it's all all found right here. Get yourself acquainted with the Word of God. Amen. Get yourself acquainted with it. Had a man asked me the other day, he said, Preacher, do you think, what do you think is going to happen when the Lord comes back? I said, I know one thing's going to happen. He said, What's that? I said, The dead in Christ will be the first ones out of the ground. Amen. And I said, Them alive and rain are going to go up with him. So if you're saved, you're going to be with him. Lord, how much do you think we're going to have to go through down here? I said, I have no idea, but I know this. I'd rather go through it with Jesus than without. Amen. Amen. Gives me hope, Brother Earl. Gives me hope. Used to scare me to read Revelations. Now it enlightens me. Amen. Because I see what's coming. How many sees what's coming? It's about to happen. Do you know right now they're in the process? I heard this on the radio yesterday. There's a group right now that is in the process of taking the Bible and translating it to languages of the countries, the only countries in the world that's left 
without the Word of God. They're putting it in their language where they can read and they can understand. You know you can take one of these Bibles right here and go into these foreign lands and send them out in a box, and buddy, they're gone at the time the, drop, the box drops. The last message is going to be preached. All the world's going to hear the gospel. And Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. Did you know that? Now listen to this. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all the treasures, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Here's a man with a great job. Here's a man who had all his ducks in his row. Here, now listen, if he was the man that Candace let take care of all the finances, he was one pretty trusted individual. Amen? And you've got this man that's sitting there. He'd been to Jerusalem. He was looking for something he had not found. And you've got Philip, just an old boy, that was filled with the Spirit of God, that had hope in him that, that when God said, you go down to Gaza, I, he went down to Gaza. He didn't sit and question it. I, but when God told him to do something, he done it. You want to see somebody get saved here today? Y'all wake up with me now. I ain't hardly done yet. Y'all want to see somebody get saved here today? Amen. Then do what God says. Amen. Amen. Don't hinder the Spirit of God. I, Philip didn't hinder the Spirit. He said, go down, and he went down. Amen. And the Bible said he was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. How many of you have ever been sitting in the house of God? It's got invitation time. There's people on the altar praying, and God has moved your heart and said, go down beside of that and then pray. Has that ever happened to anybody? If it hasn't, it will. Amen. Because uh, sometimes people are needing some direction. Sometimes a pat on the back. Just your hand laying there beside of them lets them know that you're there. God's got a way of giving hope that nobody else can give. Amen. And I thought about this. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. When God said go, Philip didn't waste time. He got up and run down there where he's at. Got in his prison and said, you understand what you're reading? So here's a man sitting in the treasure, or sitting in the chari a chariot. He, he, he had been a good steward. He'd been a good person. He had to have a good, uh, he had to have a good reputation. There's no way this queen would have put him in the charge that, that she did. But this man was sitting there without hope because he'd been to Jerusalem wanting to know who God was. And he'd left there not knowing who God was. Remember what I said? Those without the circumcision, they felt like they was hopeless. Here this man is. Well, here comes Philip. Old boy filled with the Spirit. The Bible said, and he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the Scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So he opened not his mouth. Who's he talking about? In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Who's he talking about, church? Talking about Jesus, amen. Why did they not declare his generation? Because if they'd have started studying it and they'd have started looking at it instead of blaspheming and believing the devil, amen, they'd have figured out that this could be the very Son of God that he said he is, amen. And they dismissed it. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh this prophet of himself or some other man. Church, right here is how you give people hope. Then Philip opened his mouth, began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. Amen. Jesus. There ain't no hope without Jesus. Amen. If Jesus sat and died, we might as well go to the house. We might as well shut our Bibles and go to the house. If he had not been buried, we might as well give it up. If he had not arose that third and glorious morning, we might as well lay down and die. But because he did, you've got hope. You've got hope. Your children's got hope. God will save you and your whole house. Amen to that. You've got hope. You don't quit. Don't give up believing in Jesus. No matter what the world shoves down your throat and in your ears and in your eyes, you believe what Jesus said. This man opened his mouth and preached to him. Jesus, amen. That's where the hope was at. 
And the Bible said, Philip, when he done this, they went on their way and they came unto certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? What's that tell you? That already tells me right there that the eunuch thought I've got to do some kind of work before God would save me. Amen. He'd heard of baptism. He'd heard of John baptizing, baptizing people under repentance. Amen. But listen to what Philip said. He said, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. Amen. He said, listen, son, if you want to get baptized, that's good. But first you need to get saved. Amen. How do you get saved? With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto of salvation as soon as you confess Christ there's something comes inside of you that takes away all the sin amen and the spirit of God comes in to dwell forever you mean it's there forever preacher I got saved on April the 7th 2002 amen I, when I come up and said yes to Jesus uh, the burden went out and the blessing come in amen I've not always been good I've not always been right but God God has never forsook me. He's never failed me. He is with me in the morning. He is with me in the evening. And sometimes I get in the spirit and feel like I can come up to the third heaven. And I sometimes I have to say, God, where are you today? But don't fear. He's always there. That's the hope I've got. What about your hope? What does it rest in? Who do you believe in? Have you got your soul anchored in Christ? Or is it in something else? Amen. I'm preaching to somebody today who needs hope. Amen. You're sitting here today worried to death that you're going to die and go to hell. Jesus can make rearrangements. He can save you and you ain't got to worry about hell. I ain't worried about hell. How about you? Hell wasn't made for me. He wasn't made for you either. I ain't going there. Anybody else going to say I ain't going to hell either, preacher? I ain't going there. And I ain't going to that place. And I thought about this. This Luke, the Bible said, he answered, said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I don't believe that. I believe there was tears in his eyes. I believe his voice was shaking. I remember what it was like, and I was under conviction. How about y'all? He commanded the chariot and sat still. And they went down. That's amazing to me. They're in the middle of a desert. Is that not right? God put a water hole in the desert. Amen. Thank God can't do things. You might come into this place. This old dry and weary land out here today. And I ain't much, but I'm going to preach to you Jesus because I want you to have hope. And right here in the middle of the, the worst time in the world, been in a pandemic for a year, you get to hear about somebody can give you some hope. There ain't no better water drink than that. Amen? Amen? And I thought about this. They went down, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Amen. Why, Brother Glenn? Because he got hope. Because he got hope. Listen, church. It's been a long week. I've had a lot. And I apologize. I feel like a backslid. And I ain't been here in three Wednesday nights because of my job. If the Lord's will, and I'm alive, I'll be here this Wednesday. If it's the Lord's will. If I ain't alive, alive I'll be with him. <laughs> I'll be more alive than I've ever been in my life. Amen. Amen. He might die as in Christ. They just got promoted to life everlasting. Amen. It's been rough. A couple of weeks. When I sat down yesterday morning and started reading this, God brought back to my mind something that I was told this week. And it's right. I was in some meetings with some of the folks from the Jailers Association. I don't know if any of them's ever been to jail, but in the jail, there's people that's sitting there that's without hope. And when you get an opportunity to go in there to preach to them people, you don't see a man that's committed a crime in front of you. You see somebody that needs Jesus. Amen? If you'll see them that way, you can help them. Let me just tell you sometime about preaching. When I went to preach to the women in the Clay County Jail, they're tell you sitting down beside of a young lady that was sitting there weeping the whole time I was preaching because she had been guilty of a crime that had put her in jail. And while she was there, her house burnt and her children died in that fire. And her sitting in that jail. She needed to hear about hope. You remove the hope from somebody, you take the life out of them. 
You want to see people change when they come out of jail, give them some hope. Amen. Tell them they don't have to go back to what they were. They don't have to do the things that they used to do. You notice that Jesus, when he, when he saved the man over there in Mark chapter 5, that man wanted to go back with Jesus. He wanted to follow him, legion the wild man. You notice what Jesus done? He said, you go show your hometown. The place that kicked you out. The place that didn't think you'd ever amount to nothing. You go show them what I've done for you. Amen? Everybody that's here today that's saved is saved for a reason. And that reason is to show somebody there's hope in Christ. Amen. Are you with or without hope in Litterbox Baptist Church today? Are you with or without hope watching by Facebook ministry today? Do you know Jesus or do you not? Because if you don't, I've come to introduce you to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lily of the Valley. The bright in the morning star. The rose of Sharon. There ain't nothing no prettier than the love that Jesus has for His people. Amen. And to think that He all took all my ugliness of my sin and nailed them to a cross and put them to death. I want to stand and praise Him today because He's worthy to be praised every day of our life. Nobody's no more worthy than Jesus to be praised. But the Jailers Association made a statement this week. When the inmates, they done a study. When they come in and they're given hope, they're given a chance to change. And there's a great big percentage of them does. When they're showed I can be alive without being a fugitive or a criminal. Or I don't have to be uh, hooked in, uh, and, and substance abuse. I can be free from that. When they're given that, they're given hope. When they come in and they're not given hope, they won't and they cannot change. They done a study, every inmate that ever came in the jail that they said, you're just too sorry to even fool with. They never did even try to change. You take the hope out of a man, you take the life out of him. I want to remind you of something today before we get feelings in our life like there's people that don't need saved. I, I, I advise you to go read about Saul before he came Paul. Because he was the worst of the worst. If you was a Christian, he'd put you in jail. Man, woman, boy, or girl, he'd nail you to a stake. He hated Christians. Had a arrest warrant to put them in jail and to kill them. But he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And God changed his life. How many of you today would say this and be proud to say this? God changed my life. I mean, he changed my life. I'm not the same because I've got hope. I told Misty, I was, <laughs> she's about to throw something at me this morning. I said, if I, if I fall down in the pulpit today, just take me to London. That's the closest place. If not, I'll go on up to glory. Because I've got hope. I've got hope in Christ and Him alone. Do you have hope today? If somebody you've been praying for, you just don't think that God's going to... Make enter into set. Are they saved? You know what? Let's stand to our feet. I make a mistake, and I'm going to say it's probably a common mistake it's made. I'm going, to, I'm going to confess something to you. I make a mistake that's probably a common mistake. When we hear that somebody has contracted a bad disease or has something medically that's very wrong with them, the first thing we automatically say is, well, what are the doctors saying? And what's the, what's the prognosis? What do they think? When really, the first thing we should say is, are they saved? Do they know Jesus? Because, listen, friend, whether you live to be 25 or 125, whether you're the healthiest person that ever walked or you've had health problems all your life, you've got a soul that's going to stand before God in judgment. Without Jesus, there's no hope in judgment. Jesus is the advocate for the saved. You know, you could not stand before God if it wasn't for Christ. Amen. You realize that today? That's how awesome that God is. I just want to raise my hands and worship Him. Amen. He's awesome. I know what He's done for me. I know what He's brought me up out of. I know how He's helped me. And I know what He can do for you. That's why I stand here and preach to you today. I've opened my mouth and preached to you, Jesus. You could have had anybody to preach to you today. Maybe give you something that would have been good advice down the road. 
But we need to be preaching Jesus. Because that's where our hope is at. Now today, don't walk around at the crowd. Don't look down the seat beside of you. If the Spirit says come to this altar, you come. If we want to see people get saved, we need to do our part. Amen. What's our part, preacher? Whether it's praying here, praying in our seat, maybe sitting down to pray, standing up to pray. Maybe it's to testify to your neighbor. Maybe God's got somebody in your heart you need to go see this week. I have no idea. But whatever God says to do, well, how am I going to do that? Just use the hope that's in you. Because God put it in you. Amen. 131 times he talked about it in King James. It's there. And it's here. As we say. 321. Alders open. Any would like to come. of God that passes by understanding or is it void and empty? Ethiopian, that eunuch had worked to gain the trust of Candace. He worked a long time to get the trust. And I'm sure when he went to Jerusalem that day, he was probably talking to God, God, I'm trying. I'm doing everything I can to make you happy. I don't know what you want, Lord, but I just can't get any peace. I've come, I've sacrificed, I've given, but I just can't find it. On the way back, he had gained the word of God on his travels. He was reading about Isaiah and all about what Isaiah said. About that one that suffered. Went like a lamb done before his shears. If anybody had the right to open his mouth, it was Christ. Amen. But he did not. He 
if he had not. And there he sent. And you know what I'm going to say probably this eunuch was thinking after he got saved? He's probably thinking the same thing a lot of us. Well, if I noticed that easy, I'd done it a long time ago. That's the way I was. I held on to being who I thought I was for a long time. And I found out there's no respect to persons with God Almighty. And you've got a soul that Jesus died for. And I pray before death closes your eyes that you get to know Him. Amen. 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 Good.